Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless the Savior, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call for us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, one God, God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, and may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament reading is from the book, the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet come. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am for you, call me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. My son lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, said, Here I am, Eli said. What is it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him. Let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Bathsheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet. The 
word of the Lord. That is the sound of great music. Our second reading from the New Testament is from 1 Corinthians, a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. 
The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh, but anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornication, the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? What you have from God is that you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Please be seated. Last Sunday was the celebration of the Feast of Jesus' Baptism, which signaled the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And the first thing that Jesus did was to gather together a group of followers, disciples, because he was not going to do this ministry alone. That gathering of disciples continues to this very day as we welcome Daniel Joseph Katz into the fold of followers of Jesus. Well, today's Gospel reading from John focuses on the initial gathering of Jesus' disciples. Now, if we go back some time into the Old Testament, we hear about another call of discipleship that precedes Jesus' ministry. We hear about the call of the Lord to often reluctant hearers, like Moses, who protested, telling God he was slow of speech, and Jeremiah, who said, I'm only a youth, and Jonah, who when he was told to go to Nineveh and set them straight, he took off in the other direction, headed to Tarshish, and you know where he ended up, in a way. Calling people back to the Lord when they've gone astray is no easy task. It is not a task that anyone wants to take on. Well, it was about 3,000 years ago, a time we were told that the word of the Lord was rare in those days and visions were not widespread. This is the time that the word of God came to Samuel that he was to deliver a word of judgment. Not a pleasant task. At first, Samuel didn't realize that God was calling him. He thought it was Eli, the temple priest calling him, and waking him up in the middle of the night. But it wasn't Eli. It was God that was calling to Samuel to deliver words of judgment against no less than Eli's son sons, his household. So listen again to how this unfolds in the Old Testament lesson. First of all, Eli's eyesight was growing dim. He was getting old. Samuel was with him, presuming, I presume acting sort of as a caregiver, taking care of Eli in his old age. Well, during the night, Samuel hears a voice calling to him, Samuel, Samuel. So he gets up to check on Eli. But Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Well, this happens three more times. And then finally, Eli perceived that it might be the Lord who was calling to Samuel. And indeed, it was. And the words that the Lord spoke to Samuel were words of judgment against Eli's sons. This was very scary. Samuel was to speak out against Eli's family when Eli was his mentor, his security. Well, understandably, Samuel would be afraid to do this, but he did it. He followed the Lord's direction. And believe it or not, Eli knew in his heart of hearts that Samuel was, given, was speaking words that were given to him by God. From that time on, as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Oh, if we only had those trustworthy prophets today who would speak out loud the words, God-given words, of judgment and calling us back to the Lord. Now, we have to remember in the time of Samuel, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. 
Well, we might say that's the case today as well. There's so much bad stuff going on in our world and such strong reluctance to hold leaders in industry, government, and even in the judicial system to accountability, where, we might ask, is the word of the Lord? Well, 2,000 years ago, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus came into the world. God came incarnate in the flesh so that the word would actually dwell among us. In today's gospel, we see Jesus walking about and saying directly to those who would become his first disciples, follow me. Perhaps it was easier to respond to the call when Jesus in the flesh called folks to follow him. Perhaps that call was easier to discern than the call of Samuel, who initially thought Eli was calling him, rather than God calling him. So where are we today? Where and how is the call to follow our Lord seen and heard? Very soon, following his baptism, we will welcome Daniel with these words. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with, with us in his eternal priesthood. This is following the sections of the baptismal service where the parents and godparents, speaking for themselves and on behalf of Daniel, renounce evil, turn to Christ, and promise to follow and obey him. Then, the whole congregation affirms our faith by joining in the recitation of the baptismal covenant. This action reminds us that we, like Samuel, like the early disciples, and millions of others who have heard and responded to God's call upon our lives. As we move from the baptismal service to the Eucharist, we exchange the peace. As I was reviewing the draft bulletin earlier this week, I saw something very interesting. One can't exactly call it a typo. Perhaps it was a divine word substitution interjected by a computer program that thought it knew what word was to come next. You know how that goes. You type in two letters of a word, and then the computer decides what the word is? Well, anyway, the piece, you know, that starts out P-E, came out as, the people of the Lord be always with you. Well, Sean and I found, found this quite amusing. But do you know what? That statement is actually very profound. What a baptismal gift for Daniel. May the people of the Lord be always with him and with all of us as well as we strive to live out our lives in faithfulness to God, strengthening our belief in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, continuing in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, persevering and resisting evil, proclaiming the good news of God in Christ, seeking and serving Christ in all persons, and striving for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. This is a tall order. It's a tall order for little Daniel, but he's got his parents and his godparents to help bring him up to understand this order. But it's, a it's an order to all of us as Christians. It is the call of God on our lives. Amen. Amen.
The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Responsible for seeing that Daniel is brought up in the Christian faith and life. I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Daniel to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. And these questions, these follow up questions, are for the parents and the godparents. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Now this is where you all join in. We'll witness these vows to all of your power to support this person in his life in Christ. We will. Let us with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. You may kneel or sit for the prayers for the candidate. <laughs> Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Lord, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water as we pray. We pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue to the of Jesus, Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Struck by the baptism candidate. Daniel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Yep, one more. And the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Daniel, do you want to mark? Oh, you don't want this. <laughs> but, <laughs> the Holy Spirit and baptism and mark is Christ's own forever. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. I just have a couple of real quick announcements. Um, in an attempt to um, enhance our adult formation, you'll find that there is an online questionnaire that we're asking individuals to please complete. Um, if you cannot access that, we'll be happy to make sure that you get a paper copy. You can either contact uh, Marty or you can contact um, Wes for that or myself and we'll make sure that you get that. Um, the second thing is, uh, save the date, please. Tuesday, February 13th, it's short Tuesday. We'll be having uh, our dinner between 5 and 7 p.m. We're gonna be looking for donations and volunteers for that. You can please contact Donna for that, or you can contact Marty, and there will be a sign-up sheet coming out in the next couple of weeks. And finally, everyone is welcome to join us for fellowship and coffee to celebrate the baptism of Daniel Joseph Katz this morning. We're going to be in Burks Hall immediately following the service. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming to glory, and we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are called to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving.
thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you.